the ego is the self in a suitcase. When people travel and they want to uh, take as, as much as they can with them in a small space, they have to fold it up. And, uh, and so the ego folds up the self into as tiny a particle as possible in order to travel through space and time. It, from a monad, it becomes a nomad. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it travels, putting all of its infinity into a tiny divine spark. But then it soon forgets how much that infinitesimal point of light contains. So we've been talking a bit about Gödel, and uh, for those who, who wanted to know, I thought, okay, there are probably a few scholarly types here, and uh, it may be hard for some to find. So this is a good book that discusses uh, Gödel's ideas about Leibniz. It's called The Logical Journey uh, by Hao Wang, Hao meaning uh, spelled H-A-O, and uh, he, he is a, uh, a philosopher of, of logic and mathematics in his own right, but he was a student and colleague of Gödel for a long time and took notes on their conversations, and they're contained in here, and it's, there's some, some very brilliant ideas that never got published uh, formally. But the final uh, book on, on Deleuze, on, on, on uh, Leibniz, is by Deleuze, uh, Gilles Deleuze, uh, the, uh, the French post-structural philosopher, and the title is The Fold, uh, and uh, it, Leibniz and the Baroque, it's called. And he has some very interesting and very complex ideas about Leibniz, but I, I, it came to me that they, it could be simplified in a way that perhaps might make uh, things uh, easier to, uh, to grasp. So, let's see if I can uh, explain it to you. <laughs> this is the self, okay? Imagine this paper is the cosmos, all right? It's written there so you know it's true, <laughs> okay? This is the self. This is what you are, the entire cosmic consciousness. And then you decide to fold yourself over. And as soon as you fold yourself over in two, you become duality. And you become all of the cosmic dualities of consciousness and world and uh, light and awareness, subject, object, all, all the dualities. And then you decided to fold those and instead of a universal duality, now you become particularity, okay? Everyone becomes particularity and then from particularity, of course, you fold, uh, which fold is it? You fold once more, and now you become the concrete ego, all right? And uh, that's not quite enough. The ego then folds its conscious and subconscious so that the sensor is now its controlling entity, and now you're down here in your little suitcase of ignorance, <laughs> okay? Avidya. And you've forgotten how much is inside of you but it's all there, the whole cosmos, okay? So there's proof. So that's my idea of the fold. Not Deleuze's, but it's a simpler idea. But it's fact, so if you unfold yourself completely, you'll discover the whole cosmos is within you. So that's the whole retreat in a nutshell. Should have just said it the first day and we could have quit. So uh, once you are completely unfolded, because if you think about it, what are ego defenses except folding in to protect your vulnerability, right? It's simply a refusal to let go and expand. And the more that you let go, the more you become fearless and decontract, decollapse your quantum wave functions, the more you, you open to the infinite, and you realize that you are that. And you let go of identity of, with the body, which contracts you into uh, an investment into 
uh, materiality and temporality and uh, fear and desire because the body vehicle has needs and uh, insecurities, etc. But once you disidentify from that, then you realize that uh, you, are, you are beyond all uh, needs, desires, fears, wants. You're complete, you're whole. You, you are uh, able to accept whatever is with open arms and uh, without uh, resistance. You recognize that the whole world that you saw from the ego perspective was a projection. The, the ego really is a monad, which means consciousness folded in upon itself, and uh, it cannot see outside itself. As Leibniz said, the monad has no windows. So everything you feel and think about another person is a projection. The ego does not know what the other person thinks or feels about you, but you can project that they are feeling negative, and then within your monad, you, you will uh, send energy to their monad that will produce some kind of an interaction, positive or negative. But it's based on fantasy, determined by the psychodynamics of the inner figures of the monad projected outward. But there is no actual rapport between individuals only uh, fantasies are being exchanged uh, and not even in a, uh, an accurate way. So there's no communication, there's no communion of egos. So for there to be a holy communion, one must be whole and in the level of spirit. And then there are no walls, and therefore no need for windows because all is one. So the unfoldment brings peace. It brings uh, love. There can't be love if there are walls, if there are defenses, if there's a feeling of a need to protect oneself or prove oneself or uh, have some, uh, some kind of a relationship of uh, contest and conflict uh, with anyone. One has to be unconditional, unconditioned, and unconditionable. And in that space of total empowerment, one has the luxury of freedom again, and to freely see everyone as a manifestation of the cosmic consciousness, and never leave the state of ecstasy that is the realization of the self. So, once you have unfolded completely, there, there would be no tendency to want to go back into any smaller version of yourself. <laughs>